In this video, we want to talk about the own consumption of uh, PV electricity. So, what is the idea of own consumption? You see, um, we have the consumer, commercial customer, residential customer who uh, has a demand of electricity. Now, of course, uh, mainly this demand is um, fed by the grid, so the electricity is taken from the grid. Um, but now it's getting more and more interesting uh, from the, the economic point of view to use uh, photovoltaic systems, uh, rooftop systems, uh, to produce the own uh, electricity, use it uh, within the building. Um, if there's a larger energy yield uh, than the demand, this uh, PV yield can be fed into the electric grid and uh, is paid by the energy utility. Um, on the other hand, if the demand of the consumer is uh, larger than the yield of the PV system, there's still the need of electricity coming from the grid. But the main idea is now that by having this own consumption that the PV yield is used within the building, uh, in the house uh, or in the factory of a commercial or industrial consumer, um, first the PV yield is taken or the PV energy is taken and just second, the energy from the grid is, is used as the PV yield uh, today is cheaper than the energy from the grid. And that makes uh, the own consumption, the use of PV very interesting uh, for uh, residential and commercial users. Here you can see a typical situation regarding the own consumption of a household. You see in, in green, the green curve represents the, the electricity taken from the grid. Uh, the blue curve represents the own consumed electricity uh, coming from the PV system and in yellow that's the energy production curve of a PV system uh, one day and during the summer time you see the PV system has a capacity of 5 kilowatt peak and uh, it's a, in this example we have a look at a working day uh, with a three person household. Um, so you see at night there is no sunshine, of course, so what you see is you see the small increases regularly uh, coming from the refrigerator um, to cool down um, uh, all the goods. Uh, then you see here at uh, half past uh, six there is a uh, high or large peak, there is no sunlight, so there is no uh, yield coming from the PV system. Uh, so if someone is, is preparing a breakfast uh, using the coffee machine, whatever, with a power of about one kilowatt peak, uh, or one kilowatt, uh, and then you see an increase of the uh, PV production. Of course, this uh, the yield is fed into the grid. Just a small amount is consumed um, within the refrigerator, who is running again for let's say twenty minutes or three minutes. And then in the afternoon, you see there uh, is the own consumption rate, uh, or the own consumption is increasing. You see someone might do some chorus, uh, whatever, preparing a, uh, lunch or something like this. And then you see we have the uh, sunset in the afternoon, the late afternoon, beginning of evening. Um, you see here at uh, half past five. Um, 100% of the PV yield is unconsumed and uh, as there's, one, uh, there's additional energy demand, just a small amount must be taken from the grid. So you see two peaks, the blue one uh, on consumption and the green one, uh, there's a slight additional demand which has to be fulfilled by the grid. And then you see in the afternoon at 7 p.m. on the evening 7 p.m. the supper preparation you see a high demand which is to one third uh, it's, it's fulfilled by the PV system and the larger part is uh, fulfilled by uh, the electricity coming from the grid and then you see in the evening there might be some watching TV or whatever so this uh, energy demand um, uh, cannot be fulfilled by the PV system anymore the electricity is taken from the grid of course, you see on the one hand, uh, again, this profile of the refrigerator and then some additional uh, demand coming from uh, watching TV or using a computer or whatever. So in this case, there's no battery. We just have the PV system 
uh, and this yellow marked area, that's the energy of the BV system, which is fed into the grid. Uh, and just a small amount uh, is, is unconsumed. If you take a look at the cost development of the German PV sector, what you can see here is uh, what, how has the energy purchase price developed in the beginning of 2004 until now, and what's about the feed and tariffs, so the money um, an PV operator or owner gets from the energy utility, and what's about the uh, LCOE, so the levelized costs of electricity from a PV system. Um, so uh, you see these different uh, curves, um, and let's have a look, what does it mean? So first of all, the energy purchase price of residential and industrial con consumers, that's the bandwidth of the uh, energy purchase price for electric energy in Germany, with a continuous increase of the residential costs, that's the upper limit, and the lower limit is for, for mid-sized industrial consumers, uh, with the beginning of, um, let's say, 9 uh, euro cents per kilowatt hour. And today we have a price for the residential customers of uh, about 30 euro cents per kilowatt hour. On the other hand, we have the feed and tariff. Um, so the PV systems um, in Germany get a, feed, a fixed feed and tariff, uh, depending on the capacity and the year uh, or the date of installation or grid connection. Uh, in the past, 2004-2005, we have had rather high feed and tariffs uh, between um, 45 and up to uh, nearly 60 euro cents uh, for small systems. So the upper limit is for smaller systems and the lower limit is for, for large ground mounted uh, systems. And you see this continuous decrease of the feed and tariff with a very fast drop in 2010 to 2013. And then you see uh, the feed and tariff keeps on a low level um, between or at about 10 euro cents per kilowatt hour. And finally, in green, that's uh, that are the levelized costs of electricity. So under consideration of the investment costs for a PV system regarding the, uh, the PV modules, the inverters and the BOS, so balance of system costs. Uh, and of course, the cost during the operation phase, the operation and maintenance costs you have, uh, the costs for the loan, etc. You can derive the levelized costs of electricity, or you can estimate uh, these costs. Of course, uh, the lower costs correspond to larger systems, and the, the upper limit corresponds to um, the, the costs of a PV system, a rooftop system, for example, small systems. But you see, uh, also, a fast decrease of these levelized costs of electricity. Um, at the moment, uh, the LCOE of PV systems in, in Germany varies in between, uh, let's say, um, five cents for mid-sized rooftop systems and uh, uh, about 11, 10 or 11 cents for small rooftop systems with a capacity of, let's say, four or five uh, kilowatt peak. And what you can see is now is uh, that in 2011, uh, or beginning in 2010, 2011, um, up to 2013, we have reached this break, breaking point or turnaround that the energy purchase price for residential consumers and even for industrial consumers is higher than the levelized cost of electricity of a PV system. So that means that the electricity coming from a PV system is cheaper then the electricity uh, you have to pay for uh, coming from the grid. So in this case, it, this means that it is cheaper to use PV electricity than grid electricity. And that makes it uh, interesting to use and in, to install and to use a PV system on a roof. Um, of course, uh, for the residential customers, that uh, that's the upper limit of the energy purchase price. And even for um, industrial consumers, that's, uh, it's getting more and more interesting as the um, costs for electricity are still rising um, and the costs for PV are declining or decreasing. So um, you see that the difference is getting large and that makes it more and more attractive to use um, PV electricity instead of electricity of the grid and to, to have an own consumption of the PV electricity.
how are the self-consumption rate and the energy self-sufficiency rate defined? So uh, the self-consumption rate or own consumption rate, that's the ratio of the PV yield, which is consumed by the building, by the consumer, over the total energy yield of the PV system. On the other hand, the energy self-sufficiency rate, SSR, that's the ratio of the PV consumed, self-consumed energy over the total energy demand or total energy consumption of the building. So let's make an example uh, to show how to calculate these two ratios. Uh, let's think about we have a capacity of our PV system of 50 kilowatt peak and we have a specific yield of full load hours of 1000 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak so 1000 full load hours the typical condition in central europe uh, let's think about that the energy demand uh, of the building the total energy demand or total consumption etc total consumption that is 60 megawatt hours and the self-consumed pv energy so e SC for self-consumption uh, that should be 30 megawatt hours. So what you can do now is uh, try to, to um, calculate these uh, these two ratios. Just uh, pause the video and have a look at these uh, two ratios. What we can do is let's let's make a quick sketch how the energy flow looks like. So we have the building. Let's, uh, factory or whatever. Then we have the PV system which is uh, producing the energy yield uh, and of course we need the grid. And uh, what do we have? On the one hand we have uh, the capacity of 50 kilowatt peak. So what we can do is we can calculate the energy which is uh, produced by the energy system. So what is the yield? E yield that is 50 kilowatt peak times 1000 full load hours and that gives us 50 megawatt hours. That's the yield, the annual yield of the PV system. Then we know that 30 megawatt hours are uh, self-consumed, so that is 30 megawatt hours are consumed within the uh, the uh, building, the company, we have these 50 megawatt hours coming from the PV system. Uh, we know the overall energy demand is 60 megawatt hours. Uh, and then what we can do is we can derive on the one hand what is the energy which is fed into the grid. We have 50 megawatt hours which are produced, 30 megawatt hours are self-consumed. So overall we have a, with 20 megawatt hours which are fed in. To the grid. On the other hand, there's an energy demand which has to be fulfilled by the grid. And so we know that 60 megawatt hours is the annual energy demand, 30 megawatt hours are coming from the PV system. So there's a lack of energy that's 30 megawatt hours. So that's the energy demand which has to be fulfilled by the grid. And now we can use these values to calculate the self consumption rate SCR and the self-sufficiency rate, SSR. So SCR, that is the self-consumed PV energy, 30 megawatt hours over uh, the annual PV yield, 50 megawatt hours, and that's 0.6 or 60%. So 60% of the PV yield is self-consumed and 40% of the PV yield is fed into the uh, to the grid. Then we have the self-sufficiency rate, SSR. That is again the consumed, the self-consumed PV energy, 30 megawatt hours, over the total energy demand or energy consumption, 60 megawatt hours, and that is 0.5 or 50 percent. So uh, what you can see is that 50 percent of the uh, uh, of the energy demand can fulfilled by the, by the, the PV system, 
and 50% of the energy must be uh, provided by the grid. And that's, these two values give you an idea of uh, these ratios. Um, and uh, of course, the goal is that uh, the SCR, the self consumption rate, is, is, is increased. And of course, the SSR, the self sufficiency rate, is also increased uh, to use less energy from the grid. Um, as typically, this energy is to be more expensive than the electricity provided by the PV system. So, if you want to reduce your energy costs, it makes sense to increase this value to increase the self consumption rate and the self sufficiency rate. If you take a look at the feed in tariff of PV systems which are installed in July 2020 in Germany, you see that there are two different types of the feed in tariff. On the one hand, the revenue cap regarding the market premium model, and then we have the fixed feed in tariff. Um, you see that this feed in tariff is separated regarding the capacity of the system. We have three uh, limits of rooftop systems installed on a residential uh, building. And then there's an additional definition of a feed in tariff for commercial buildings or ground mounted systems. Um, you have this market premium model, so you have to. Um, sell and trade your electricity on the um, energy exchange. Uh, then you have a slightly larger reference price regarding this feed-in tariff. On the other hand, uh, if you want to, if you choose this fees, uh, fixed feed-in tariff, um, you have slightly smaller values for the PV system installed in July 2020. And so what we have is we have this monthly degression of these values regarding the installed capacity or addition of capacity within the last period. And then what you get is you get for your residential system uh, regarding your capacity or different weights uh, of these feed-in tariffs. So the larger the system is, the smaller the feed-in tariff uh, will be. Um, if you have a commercial building, um, you have the limit of 100 kilowatt peak regarding this feed, uh, fixed feed-in tariff. If you have a larger uh, PV system on a commercial building and you want to feed in the electricity, you have to uh, trade this electricity on the uh, energy exchange and you have a smaller uh, reference value. Otherwise, of course, for smaller systems, it's still very attractive to get this uh, feed-in tariff, uh, this feed, fixed feed-in tariff. Uh, you have to keep in mind that this, this feed-in tariff is, is paid for uh, 20 years, so this value does not change over the whole uh, operation phase. Uh, this is a fixed value uh, for 20 years, and just in the value depends on the date of uh, grid installation or grid connection. Uh, and then that's important to, to do all the investment calculation to know what will be the revenue uh, your system uh, makes. The feed and tariff based on the German Renewable Energy Law EEG shows a significant drop within the last uh, 16 years since the EEG, this Renewable Energy Law, has been established. You see uh, these uh, curves in uh, green, blue and red show the feed and tariff for the different uh, capacity of the systems. Um, the smaller the system, uh, the higher the feed and tariff. You can see in, in green that are small rooftop systems, and we have uh, mid sized and large rooftop systems in blue, and then finally in red that are ground mounted systems. So um, uh, the capacity threshold has changed um, over the time, so there is no um, clear threshold or limit um, as this has changed um, during this uh, the, the, the period. In yellow, you can see the installed capacity of um, PV systems in Germany with a fast increase, in particular between 2010 and 2013, with an um, synchronously de fast decrease of the uh, of the feed and tariffs. So you see in the beginning, um, uh, you see high feed and tariffs between 45 and uh, 40. Uh, nearly 60 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So that feed and tariff is paid for the system which has been installed in 2004 and 2005. Um, and this money is paid for 20 years. So there is no change in these feed and uh, tariff. It just depends on the date of grid connection. And then you get the money, 
this fixed feed-in tariff for 20 years uh, for the PV system. Uh, but of course, the idea was that this feed-in tariff will decline, that this is an interesting um, addition of earning money by using PV systems. And then we have had this fast increase of this capacity. And uh, in the same period, we have had in particular two phases with the fast drop in the mid of 2010 and uh, in the beginning of 2012 with the fast drop of the feed and tariff. And then you see uh, we have kept on a constant level as the increase of the capacity of the installed capacity in, in Germany has uh, slowed down. And you see now in the last two or three years, we have an increased uh, addition of capacity and that results in faster decrease of this feed and tariff. At the moment, we have slightly more than 50 gigawatt peak installed in Germany and the feed and tar tariff um, varies between uh, 6 and uh, nearly uh, 9 uh, euro cents per kilowatt hour uh, PV electricity. So let's make a quick example. Uh, think about we have a rooftop system which is installed on a residential building so that we get a fixed feed in tariff for our system, 50 kilowatt peak capacity with a specific yield of 1000 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak or 1000 full hours and um, now let's let's think about how to calculate the feed and tariff we get so what we have is let's make a quick sketch we have our uh, pv system with a capacity of 50 kilowatt peak and the calculation is similar to um, the calculation of the money you get uh, for feeding in electricity from a CHP, so a combined heat and power plant. Um, so that's a, so the same way of where the calculation of the weighted average of these uh, feed and tariffs. So what we have is uh, the first 10 kilowatt peak of our system, um, this part gets the highest uh, feed and tariff. So this part gets 9.03 cents per kilowatt hour. So that value is used over there. Then uh, we have a system with up to 40 kilowatt peak. So between 10 and 40 kilowatt peak. This part of our PV system gets the second uh, feed and tariff uh, value. So this one is used for the second part and then our system is smaller than 100 kilowatt peak um, so the third part that is used for the calculation so we have 6.89 cents per kilowatt hour um, for the final part of our pv system and now what we do is we calculate the weighted average so what we have is the first 10 kilowatt peak of our 50 kilowatt peak PV system uh, times 9.03 cents per kilowatt hour. So the values are well for an installation in July 2020. Um, we have to keep this in mind. As these values uh, change during time. You see this monthly degression value with a drop of these values per month with a degression of 1.4%. So the later you install it or you connect your system to the grid, the smaller or slightly smaller these values will be. Uh, so keep this in mind. You have always to take a look at the data provided by the Federal Network Agency. So first part, 10 over 50 times 9.03 cents per kilowatt hour. Then the second part, that's 40 minus 10, so 30 kilowatt peak over 50 kilowatt peak that part gets 8.78 cents per kilowatt hour fixed feed and tariff for 20 years and then the final part we have 50 minus 40 kilowatt peak divided by the capacity of 50 kilowatt peak times 6.89 cents per kilowatt hour so uh, just use a calculator to derive what is the uh, final feed and tariff and that's 8.452 cents per kilowatt hour so that is the feed and tariff of our system uh, second question is what is the revenue the annual revenue of our system so uh, let's say revenue r 
that is uh, the annual yield we get so that's a 50 kilowatt peak times 1000 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak that's the reason why we use this specific yield or the full load hours because full load hours times the nominal power gives us the energy so we have 50 megawatt hours or 50,000 kilowatt hours times uh, 8.452 cents per kilowatt hour and that gives us an annual revenue of 4226 euros so that is the annual revenue of our system and this value is now used uh, in the uh, in the investment cost calculation uh, what's the overall revenue what's the return on invest on your uh, pv system uh, so that's always the first step to derive what is the annual revenue you get from your system. One important issue regarding the own consumption is that uh, in the German renewable energy law, the German EEG, there's a, uh, this um, EEG surcharge which has to be paid by all um, participants of the grid, so all consumers, um, and that rises uh, the costs of electricity. Uh, but what you have to keep in mind is that uh, even for the your own consume PV yield, you have to pay 40% of the actual EEG surcharge depending on the size of the system. So the red bars show you what is the energy uh, the EEG surcharge in euro cents per kilowatt hour over the time from 2003 up to now. So in 2020, we pay 6.756 sec, uh, euro cents per kilowatt hour uh, consumed electricity. So that increases the energy purchase price. And what you have to keep in mind is regarding uh, your financial calculation is that if your system is larger than 10 kilowatt peak, or on the other hand, smaller than 10 kilowatt peak, but more than 10 megawatt hours on consumed yield so that is typically not occurring that often uh, but if the system is larger than 10 kilowatt uh, peak then you have to pay 40 percent of this energy uh, or this renewable energy uh, law surcharge on your on consumed pv electricity that you have you have to add this costs to your investment calculation um, that you have to pay for uh, on the year 2020 you have to pay 40% um, of this 6.756 so that's about 2.7 euro cents per kilowatt hour additional costs you have for your PV system and that of course uh, decreases um, the financial efficiency of your system um, and drops your um, uh, return on the West, but still the PV systems are interesting, are interesting in West even for commercial customers. But you have to keep in mind that you have to pay this uh, sort of charge on the on consumed uh, PV yield. One reason why the PV sector is getting more and more interesting for residential and in particular for commercial and industrial consumers is that the uh, PV system costs have dropped significantly within the last year. So what you can see on this diagram are the costs of a PV system, a rooftop system beginning in 2006 until now. You see in, in green that is that are the module costs and in blue that are the BOS costs or so the balance of system costs including the costs for the inverter. And you see that's an average price in euros per kilowatt peak. So you see that in uh, the year 2006, 7, 8, uh, the, the costs have been uh, between 4,000 and 4,700 euros per kilowatt peak. And then you see this fast decline of cost due to, in particular, this fast job of module costs. Uh, so the cost for the production of the PV modules has dropped significantly. And then you see uh, at the moment we have uh, an installation cost of let's say one about 1000 euros per kilowatt peak for a rooftop system of course the larger the system is the cheaper the, um, the specific um, system costs are um, so you can today in, in central europe in, in, uh, install a pv system for uh, let's say between 500 
and up to 1000 euros per kilowatt peak and that's the reason that, that is the reason why the pv systems are that interesting for the co commercial customers or consumers that you can invest in a pv system and use the system to uh, produce your own electricity you can own consume uh, and then you can reduce the overall energy costs as the pv system is a cheaper source for electric energy than the energy you take from the grid next what you can do is you can derive the levelized costs of electricity of a rooftop and ground mounted pv systems depending on the one end on the location in this case in, in central europe or in germany and depending on the full load hours um, so uh, what you see is uh, with data taken from the front of easel publication from March 2018, you see the different three different uh, values. Um, so the, uh, the green curve represents uh, the levelized costs of electricity uh, for a, a system uh, in, in the northern part of Germany with a smaller full load hours. You see here 935 full load hours, so a specific yield of 935. Blue represents the system in, in the uh, Western recent part of Germany with 1,105 full load hours and the light blue uh, curve or values represent the situation of the PV system located in the southern part, Bavaria for example. Uh, so we have three, uh, three dots uh, with a capacity of 10 uh, kilowatt peak. Um, so that's a small rooftop system that is a large rooftop system and that's a a ground mounted system these error bars represent the bandwidth of these capacity values and on the other hand you see these levelized cost of electricity they vary of course between uh, uh, these marks uh, mark dot and what you can derive is as an imperial uh, empirical equation of course if you do not uh, if you are not able to do a full investment cost calculation regarding the, the, the uh, bos costs and, and the module costs um, etc. And if you want a roughly empirical um, information about what are the levelized costs of electricity, so what is the cost of one kilowatt hour of the PV system, you can use these empirical equations derived by the data taken from front of ESER. ESER so they are uh, roughly well valid uh, for most of the PV systems to get a first idea if. Uh, What's about the revenue you make? What about what's about the financial calculation you can do? So if you know the feed-in tariff, you can derive the cost uh, part using this uh, LCOE. You see, of course, the larger the system is, the smaller the LCOE is, and of course, uh, the more southern the, the, the location is. So the smaller the, the latitude is, uh, the smaller the costs are, and you see the levelized cost of electricity vary between let's say uh, five or more than five euro cents per kilowatt hour for large ground mounted PV systems in the southern part of Germany up to let's say 11 kilo uh, euro uh, cents per kilowatt hour for small rooftop PV systems uh, in the northern part of, of, of Germany but you see that uh, although this bandwidth is rather large it is possible to produce PV electricity on a level of uh, five or even six euro cents per kilowatt hour, and that shows you that the PV systems are a very cheap uh, energy source. Of course, you have to keep in mind that it's a volatile energy source. You have to uh, consider the radiation pattern, um, but the energy source is very very cheap, and that makes it very interesting to use a PV system for commercial uses and of course as well for uh, residential consumers. What you can also do is you can use this empirical equation of the energy purchase price, the IPP of industrial commercial customers with data provided by the German Federal Association of the Wind and uh, Water Industry, so the BDEW. Uh, what you can see is they've provided uh, data, uh, what are the energy purchase or what is the energy purchase price for a residential or small commercial customers with an annual energy consumption of uh, 3,500 kilowatt hours. Uh, then we have a mid-sized industry or commercial um, user. Um, you see this the error bars shows the bandwidth of these of these uh, energy consumption 
Um, and finally, a big industry with a large annual energy demand. And on the y-axis shows you the uh, EPP, so the energy purchase price. And then you can derive roughly, of course, um, the, the energy purchase price by using the energy demand. Um, and then you see, of course, the larger the energy demand is, the smaller the energy purchase price is. And that helps you to uh, do a roughly uh, calculation or estimation of what are the energy costs a customer might have who is interested in the installation of a PV system. So if you do not want to do a full investment calculation and a full PV simulation, you just want to use um, annual data, you can roughly estimate what are the costs, what are what is the revenue by using the feed and tariff um, for the PV system. And then you get a first idea of, uh, uh, of this investment um, into a PV system. What you can also do is that you optimize the PV system to increase the own consumption rate by the optimization of the orientation and inclination of the modules. What you can see here is an example. Um, we have a building uh, with a flat roof, so we have a rooftop system. Um, we have three different scenarios regarding the orientation of, these, uh, of the system. So system um, in case A, the, the modules are oriented to the south, then uh, system B is in orientation to the south uh, east and southwest, so the system is even larger as we can place more modules on this roof. You see, of course, all these obstacles on this building uh, you have to consider regarding the shading. And then the final um, uh, scenario is thus just an orientation to the southeast. Uh, again, with a smaller capacity. And then, of course, what you can do is you can derive what are the investment costs, what are what is the energy yield you get from these PV systems regarding the orientation of these modules. Uh, you can do this first on, on an annual basis by just using the energy balance. You can use these empirical equations regarding the cost, the energy purchase price, um, to have a roughly um, estimation about investment or the financial calculation of these of these projects. Of course, you need to go into details. You need to do an simulation on an hourly basis. You need to know the energy load of, of the building on an hourly basis. You need to uh, use a PV simulation system uh, to calculate the annual energy production of the system. Um, and then you, in the second step, you need to do the financial calculation. You need to derive what is the what are the, the investment costs, what are the ODM costs, what is the annual revenue, etc. And then you can compare the different scenarios. And what you can do is regarding the increase of uh, the own consumption rate, you can drop the overall um, energy cost. So what you can see here in this case, the comparison of these uh, three scenarios regarding and uh, the scenario with no PV. So you see the annual energy costs of about 100,000 euros. And then you see the, the the cost can be dropped by using the, or the annual energy cost can be dropped by using PV. And scenario C, uh, scenario B is the most interesting one in the upper right hand side uh, with the orientation of the modules to the east and to the southwest. Um, then the annual energy costs are the smallest, of course, um, you need to consider you have higher investment costs. The system is larger, 81 kilowatt peak. Um, but overall, the energy costs are, are the smallest, and that is the best configuration of the use of the PV system. So uh, if you want to go into detail and you want to optimize your PV system, you have to analyze uh, different uh, scenarios to find the best solution of how to use PV for a commercial customer. Finally, we can have a look at the concept of the own consumption, including a battery. So we have the same situation in the beginning. Uh, we have our company, which is taking electricity from the grid. We have the PV system for the own consumption. Um, the energy of the PV system is fed into the grid. Uh, if the demand is larger than the PV, yield, then uh, electricity is taken from the grid. And now what is uh, getting more and more interesting from the economic point of view is the use of a battery, of a large-scale battery for commercial or industrial uses. 
and uh, of course for residential users with a smaller battery um, if you want to increase this own consumption rate uh, you can store first the electricity of the PV system in this battery and um, then you can feed in the electricity to, to the grid and if the demand is higher than the yield of the PV system first you take the electricity from the grid and just in the second step if the uh, battery is discharged um, and you don't have a sufficient amount of PV or battery electricity then you take electricity from the grid so that gives you of course a higher own consumption rate um, and uh, it might be interesting of course you have to keep in mind what are or now we have two devices you have to consider what is what are the levelized costs of electricity for of the PV system what are the levelized costs of electricity from the battery these costs are at the moment rather high so they are not at the moment not competitive to the energy from the grid in particular for industrial or commercial users for residential users uh, that is getting more interesting as the costs uh, the lcoe of the battery is smaller than the energy purchase price uh, taken from the grid as uh, the residential users have to pay uh, more than 30 euro cents per kilowatt hour and the LCOE of batteries is, is uh, smaller and is decreasing due to the fast technical development of batteries so uh, these costs are dropping very fast similar to what we have observed in the PV sector in the last uh, last decade uh, so this is at the moment very interesting for residential customers and is and it's getting more and more interesting for commercial customers in particular if you want to cut load peaks in your load um, you can you have to pay for load peaks in your load uh, as an additional uh, price you have to pay for the energy you take from the grid but what you can do is you can shift the load by using a battery uh, you can reduce this load peaks and then you can reduce the costs and that's additionally important if you consider to use a battery as a uh, commercial or industrial user that these um, that are costs you have to consider and um, so first of all you can do a, a energy balance uh, calculation on an annual basis but if you're getting more into detail and do an, a simulation or analysis on an hourly interval uh, you will get a very deep uh, look at the costs you have at the revenue you make and the money you can save as you uh, do not rely on a high pricing energy from the grid you can produce your own pv yield you use your own electricity uh, by charging and discharging the battery and finally of course um, our final argument is you have a better co2 balance as the uh, the energy from the grid uh, has to be a higher uh, co2 uh, footprint than the pv system so you can improve um, your uh, overall costs and your overall uh, greenhouse gas emission balance